out of 500 people sampled, 170 had kids. Based on this, construct a 95% confidence interval for the true population proportion of people with kids. Give your answers as decimals to three decimal places. And so we're showing that we're estimating the true population proportion of people who have kids between two boundaries. Now, how do we find those boundaries? Well, we need a starting point. We need a best point estimate, and then we're going to add a margin of error and subtract a margin of error to get the interval. So let's begin by figuring out what is the sample proportion. That will be our best point estimate that we can use as a starting point. Now, to calculate the sample proportion, you will need the sample size, n, and you will also need x, which is the number of favorable outcomes. So we see that in our sample, we had 500 people sampled. So that's our n sample size. And that out of those, 170 were favorable. Now we can estimate our p hat, which is our sample proportion, by dividing x divided by n. So 170 divided by 500. So we have a sample proportion of 34%. Now that we have that, we want to add and subtract a margin of error to get our interval boundaries. Now, how do we calculate the margin of error? We are going to need a few things. We need to know what confidence level to use. Here, they've said to use 95%. So I'm going to enter that as a decimal 0.95. Now, the alpha, the Greek letter that looks like a fish usually, is always 1 minus the confidence level. And since our confidence intervals are always two-tailed, we need to divide that in half. So we'll say alpha half is half, so this, divided by 2. 0 0.05 divided by 2 is 0 0.025. Then we need a critical value which it, for proportions is always a z-score. And that is with an area of 0 0.025 to the left, or to the right, actually, either way. But you want the positive critical value. So since we want a positive z-score, we're going to use the absolute value function to make sure everything stays positive. Then nested inside of that, we're going to want to use our norm dot inverse, which is how we find z-scores with an area of 0 0.025 and a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1, since z-scores always have a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. Then make sure to close off the parentheses for your absolute value function and press enter. Clearly I made some sort of error here, so let me Make sure I have the right reference. Oh, I see. My, my reference needed to be on the 0 0.025. And so here is my critical value. Now that I have that, I'm going to calculate the margin of error. The margin of error when you're dealing with proportions is calculated. Let me write this to the side here. The formula which you will find on your reference packet for the test. So the margin of error for proportions is calculated using the z-score critical value with alpha half as the area, and then multiply that times the standard error, which for proportions is calculated p hat times q hat divided by n. Now we have the p hat up here already. What is the q hat? Well, just like the p hat represents the success rate, q hat represents the unfavorable rate. So that's always 1 minus p hat. Right, so now to calculate my margin of error, I'm going to take my critical value, multiply it times p hat, or excuse me, I forgot to do my square root, then multiply uh, inside the square root p hat times q hat 
and divided by n, which was 500. So this is my margin of error. So now to get my interval boundaries, so my p, the true population proportion p without a hat, is going to be in between the lower boundary, lb for lower, and the upper boundary, ub. So I'm going to start with my p hat, my best point of estimation, and subtract the margin of error. Now for my upper boundary, I will again start with p hat and add the margin of error. And then we're going to report our answers to three decimal places. So let's make that a little smaller and expand this a bit. Now we have to three decimal places, the lower boundary is 0.298. And the upper boundary to three decimal places is 0 